Welcome to London. Oh. <laughs> Well, there she is, my nice big blue Lumo train. I don't think I've seen many blue trains. Are there any other blue trains? I'm not sure. Oh, I feel right at home here. That's me, Northern. Welcome, Welcome to, to London. London. We're here outside London's King's Cross station, the home of Harry Potter. And today is a first in TPG videos. Liam is wearing a hooded sweatshirt. Never seen before, very exciting. Yeah, four years worth of videos and this is my first ever oh. hoodie. So let's hope it brings me good luck today. Today we're gonna to be comparing the two British train services that go up the east coast of the UK. Liam, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna be taking Lumo, which is a newer option of the two and it's the cheaper option. Nikki, what about you? I'm gonna take the traditional LNER service. We're going from London up to Newcastle to see what these two services are like against each other. Now my ticket, it cost me about 90 pounds for a first class ticket. I could have done standard class for about 30 quid if you book in advance. Liam, what about you? Well, my ticket costs around 20 quid and it's actually going to be 10 minutes quicker than your service. So it's going to be interesting to see if that is really a better value. It's going to be interesting to see how these two things match up against each other. So I think we should go check it out. Let's do it. Do you reckon we're going to be from platform nine and three quarters today? Oh, I hope so. Let's go see. <laughs> Well, good morning from a very bright, but very chilly King's Cross station. Very excited to try out a brand new train service here in the UK today with Lumo. Now I know it's meant to be the budget and cheaper option, but I've heard good things. So I'm very excited to step on board and see what it's all about. There they are, the trains are up on the board. The 10.30 is mine and the 10.45 is Liam's. Don't really have time for this, but I feel like we just had to have a little quick look at this very important key British landmark. Yeah. You're not going to try and jump in. I want to get on the Hogwarts Express. <laughs> Hi, uh, can I just get a flat white, please? Thank you. Right, coffee secured. Thank you, Pret. Let's go and see if my platform is ready. So I think already what you could say is that the comparison between LNER and Lumo is like looking at a legacy airline carrier like British Airways versus a low-cost carrier like Ryanair. So even in the train station, there is a first-class lounge, for example. That's something that Lumo simply doesn't have. And also different classes of service on board, so you can choose between first-class and standard-class. Lumo is just all one thing. So already, things are quite different. So Lumo is a paperless train operator, which means all tickets are issued on your mobile phone. So nice and eco-friendly and very simple. Okay, this is me, Coach D, seat 56, let's step inside. So here it is, the LNER Azuma train. We're gonna board now. It's a very noisy Grand Central Arriva train next door. I don't know if you can hear that. I hope you can hear me okay. This is much quieter. Time to get on. Okay, so we've just set off on this Lumo journey and I'm pleased to say that we departed bang on time at 10.45, which is a very good start to proceeding. So my first impressions of this train, I'm actually really impressed. It feels very clean. As you can see, I've got nice blue seat. I also don't have a seat neighbor, which is a huge result because it gives me a lot more space. But even if I did, these seats don't feel particularly cramped. They're actually quite like deep. I would say they're not the softest, they're quite stiff, but I don't really mind that. It's certainly not uncomfortable. You can see I've got a little winged headrest in terms of width. It's really not that bad, actually. If I was a little bit larger, I would still have a decent amount of space. In terms of the train cabins themselves, it's mainly laid out in a two by two configuration, but there are a few sets of four seats with two facing each other as well. Down to my left, I have an armrest, which as you can see is pretty thin and pokey, not offering a whole load of support. I've got another one just down there. You can also see I have this tray table that folds down like this, and it's not a bad size at that's all, definitely enough to fit your laptop on, do a bit of work, have a meal. Out in front of me, I have a little reading light here. So if it was a slightly darker journey, ooh, as it is now, then I could use that for a bit of extra light. You can see here the amount of leg room I have, certainly a very pleasant amount. And then finally, each seat has a full power socket and a couple of USB sockets as well. 
In terms of storage, you've got the usual overhead shelves, the smaller bags, and then there's also a section for larger bags at the end of each carriage. Alumo does have a bag policy where you're allowed one suitcase and one larger bag per passenger. So just watch out if you're ever traveling with a lot of luggage. So here we are in the first class carriage. First class carriage is arranged in a one, two configuration compared to the two, two configuration that they have in standard class. There are also three different kinds of arrangements in the first class carriage. So I'm sat on one where it's two seats opposite each other with a table on the one side you can also have a bigger table for four people on the other side or there are individual seats which is just for one person with more of a tray table in front of you. If you're a big group the big tables are great, if you're a couple the smaller tables that I'm on now are great and I would prefer these if the train is quiet to those individual seats which feel like a little bit more cramped. So overall you get a more comfortable and more spacious seating arrangement in first class and I really think it is worth the extra to be able to spread out, enjoy yourself and relax. There are a few other elements to these seats that are different to standard class so the recline is adjustable, you press the button down here and you can slide back. It's not a huge recline but it's better than nothing. You also get adjustable armrests and an individual power socket and USB for every seat. You'll also find the legroom more generous than you will in standard class. We're barely out of London. Already got myself a cup of tea and a biscuit. This is going pretty well. So as you can see, I've now got my laptop set up. I could do with maybe a little bit of extra space because I do have quite a large laptop, but it actually really isn't too bad at all. It's charging, there's free Wi-Fi on all Lumo trains, so no problems with connecting to the internet. And overall, you know, perfect for just getting a few hours of work done, which is what I'm gonna do now. So these are the standard class seats in a 2-2 arrangement, a little bit tighter, less leg room, but still quite comfortable and still quite spacious, especially if you get one of these groupings of four seats around the table. There's at seat service using a QR code, there's power chargers in all of the seats, and also adjustable armrests. No recline on this, not quite as soft, squishy and comfortable, but still a great place to sit. The big difference here, of course, is the price. I could have bought this ticket in advance around 30 pounds compared to the 90 pounds that I had to pay for the first class ticket. A rather fancy menu. So this is where the LNER service and its first class offering is going to set itself apart from everything else, is the food and drink. So you get a full food service, especially in the week. It's a little bit reduced on the weekend, but we're going to see the full offering today. So what I didn't know is that you can actually pre-order food before your journey from two weeks up to two hours before your Lumo train parts the station. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. So unfortunately, no hot food for me today. So that is a top tip. Make sure you pre-order if you want food and you're traveling with Lumo. But I do have a few goodies. I've got Diet Coke, got some cheddar and onion crisps, I've got a lovely croissant and a dairy milk chocolate bar. So for a quick three hour journey, that is not a little bad selection of goodies, if you ask me. Okay, so I'm on the 10.30 train. They do quite a comprehensive breakfast and lunch and evening service, but right now this train is a lunch service. I've kindly asked the staff if I can have my lunch a little bit later because 11 o'clock feels a bit aggressively early to have a sweet potato curry. But I'm just gonna hold off a minute. He says I can have my lunch at York, which I guess will be in about an hour and a half, which is perfect for me. Um, so really accommodating, really great, and I'm actually looking forward to building up a bit of a hunger and having that when I'm ready. If you're a snack fan, let me tell you, you're in the right place on LNER's first class because I've got biscuits, chocolate muffin, crunchy corn, a big satsuma that I already ate because I couldn't wait. It's been constant. There's a guy coming through the basket all the time, like, want another snack, want another snack, want another cup of tea, I'm on my fourth cup of tea. This is great. It keeps the journey interesting, it keeps you fed and watered, and it's all with a friendly smile. So cool. Regardless of the carriage that you're in, standard or first, you will have access to this, the cafe bar. If you want to get some nice snacks, you want more food than what you're offered in the first class carriage, then this is where you can come to get sandwiches, tea, coffee, anything you want really, even a bit of booze if you're feeling that way inclined. So my lunch has been served, we've just left York and I've got a creamy coconut sweet potato curry, it's vegan, celebrating Veganuary. Warming creamy coconut sweet potato cauliflower chickpea and spinach curry served with peas and an aromatic basmati rice. 297 calories. Now, it smells delicious, but does it taste good? One thing I will say is it's not that substantial, like it's not huge. If you're dead hungry, this isn't gonna do you, but I did get cookies and crisps and all the rest of it, but let's see how this is. 
it's hot, it's fresh, it's tasty, it's spicy, it's warming, it's freezing outside, so it makes it even nicer. This is a really great dish, a lovely lunch. My only complaint would be, I want like three times as much and like a naan bread with it. Other than that, pretty good. Now I've got my dairy milk bar and the Lumo crew actually suggested that I sat on it in order to melt it for my croissant. I'm not going to do that because I've eaten my croissant already. But all jokes aside, the crew so far have been super friendly, really lovely and polite, checking that I have everything that I need. And maybe great service isn't what you'd associate with a cheap budget way of travelling. Honestly, I could not be having a better time so far. I've got beautiful sunny views out the window, I've got the countryside hurtling past me. It's very relaxing, very calm. and. I know it's not a race today, but something about me still wants to beat Nikki there just so I can still say that I did. Well, there we go, stepping into the fresh Newcastle air, leaving my lovely Lumo train behind me. And what a lovely train it was. I don't have a single complaint about that entire service. I do wish I'd ordered my hot food before I got on the train, but my snacks were still nice. The service was very pleasant. They were very friendly. My seat was comfy and I didn't have a seat neighbor, which meant I had loads of space to stretch out. Given that my experience was cheaper than Nikki's and a little bit faster, I would definitely take Lumo again. <laughs> there she goes, my Azuma train. See you later. I really enjoyed that. So I'm now here in Newcastle Station, and I just think that Azuma LNER service couldn't have really been better. Over three hours on the train, but it went by in a jiffy with all the snacks, drinks, and the comfortable seat. It was just such a great way to head up north. Quick, comfortable, and friendlier for the environment, really, than flying. It's gonna be interesting to see how Liam's experience compared to my slightly more luxury experience, but even in standard class on LNER, I think it would have had a great